Um, Brother Jason, as we mentioned, if it's prepared uh, food in the back, and we want to have plenty of time to fellowship and love on, on Sister Bobby as he is, wants to make this a special day. But I do not want to shortchange God and the Holy Ghost, and I want him to have his way in this service. So we're going to get right into the Word of God tonight. Uh, you know where we're going, the book of Luke, chapter number 3, verse number 16. I thought I'd about picked all the meat. All the, well, let me, let me rephrase that. There's no way that you can extinguish all there is to preach on the Holy Ghost. Man, but I thought for this particular thought, after three weeks, that uh, I'd picked off all the meat that I could about fire. Uh, but I got down praying last night and... Um, wanted to go in a different direction and the Lord just still began churning that thought over in my heart and began talking to me and uh, I don't know how long we'll park out right here and preach uh, off of this one verse of scripture but uh, I know I want to park out and preach as long as he would have me preach I mean, because I do believe that the answer for this hour um, inside the church and out is a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire I mean, the only hope this world has, amen, is for the Holy Ghost to be unloosed in the church, in us. And as we go, this world goes. Amen, if the church has revival, then this world can experience what this revival power is all about. Amen, but if the church is cold and the church is indifferent, well, then the, the world is going to continue right on the plight that she is, uh, headed to a demise in hell. But I believe that there's still hope for the church. I was talking to, to Brother Eddie, I guess it was last Wednesday night after church, and uh, just shared my heart, and we were talking about the condition of the world. And, and I, I don't say this lightly. It, it grieves me, really, to say it. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how America can keep going on the trajectory and the course that she's in. And I'm not here to preach politics or, or here to um, dwell on that aspect tonight but you look at you know Soros and these devil possessed billionaires that's spending ungodly amounts of money on these movements Black Lives Matter and LGBTQ and, and, and everything else it's not with the goal of making a better America it's with the goal of dividing America the, the goal of this, uh, of evil men and women, it, it's a plot birthed in hell to divide husband against wife, parents against children, children against parents, neighbors against neighbors, uh, children against children to divide. And the word of God tells us that a house divided cannot stand. As long as America is divided, I mean, I can tell you that uh, she's standing on dangerous grounds, and, and I don't know if America's not past the point of no return. And that, that grieves my heart to say that. But as gloomy and as dark as it is for America, there's still hope for the church. The church is not going down. <laughs> the church is not going out. Amen. But the church is going to... This, this resurrection power, this, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, it, he dwells in us. And as long as he is in us, I am not a victim. I am a victor. Amen. I mean, I'm not conquered, but I am a conqueror. Amen. More than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. So as long as the church is here, we can have revival. As long as the church is here, we can have a move of God. And it is the answer for this world. Luke chapter number 3 verse 16. You know it well. Amen. John answered saying unto them all. I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I come at the latchet of whose shoes. I am unworthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. You know I was reading this week in, in this scripture. Uh, in, in a secular book. But it made this verse come alive to me to, to unlatch the shoes of someone that had been walking uh, miles and, and miles and feet were dirty. That was the job of a slave. 
That's what a slave would do. He would greet the master at his house. He would unlatch it, unloose his, his sandals, and he would begin to wash his feet. John said when it comes to Christ, I'm not even worthy to do the work of a slave. That's how humble he was when it comes to Christ. Amen. He said, I, I'm unworthy to even touch him, to unloose his shoes. Amen. But he's coming after me, and he is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'm going to preach that thought again tonight, the Holy Ghost and fire. Father, we love you tonight. We are so thankful for the privilege that we have once again to come into your house to worship you in the beauty of your holiness in spirit and in truth. We're asking now for the unction, for the anointing, for the empowerment of the Holy Ghost to rest upon us. Father, I have felt your spirit today as you have talked to me. God, in the prayer closet before church, I felt your spirit. And I'm asking that that same spirit of God would be present in the service tonight. Do a work that only you can do. I pray that you would feel and you would refill tonight, God, all over again. And Father, we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray it. And the church says amen. And amen. We've talked about the characteristics of fire and uh, different aspects of fire. And I'm not, there's no way I can go back and re-preach three weeks and, and, and just try to lay a platform to, to try to get you caught up. I encourage you to go back and get the CDs, listen to us. Uh, online to see where we've been the, the last couple of weeks. But moving forward quickly tonight, I, I want to deal with the aspect of how to obtain this fire. You know, the, the past three weeks, I've been dealing with the importance of having the fire. I've been dealing with the aspect of why the fire is important. And I hope creating a, uh, an appetite within us for this Holy Ghost and fire. But Brother Meeks, I never want to be a preacher that tells what we need, what we need, what we need, but never tell us how to get it and how to receive it for ourselves. You know, the same way I, I never want to be one to preach hell so hot, but never give yeah. the congregation an opportunity and a way out. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to ever present a problem or a lack or a need without giving the recipe or the remedy for that need. And I hope within the, th the, the past three weeks, there's been an appetite created for the fire of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Uh, but the Lord has dealt with me tonight on how to receive this fire, on how to obtain more of this fire in our lives. And if you want to know the recipe for how to receive more of the Holy Ghost uh, in your life, uh, I mean, the recipe is in the Word of God. Shocker, I know. If you're looking for some new age theory on how to receive the Holy Ghost, uh, and go, go find a televangelist somewhere. I'm not here with any new age theory. I'm here uh, with the oldest message in the book and the, the oldest recipe there is. I heard a preacher uh, not too long ago. He is more, more modern than I am, but he, what he said got a hold on I me. Mean, he said his mama makes the best fried chicken in the world. And he said he would love going to his mama's house on Sunday afternoon between church services when she was frying fried chicken. He said, man, he said uh, that was, uh, he felt close to heaven when he was eating his mama's fried chicken. And he said he could eat all he wanted to on Sunday and get his belly full of and he could go back to his mama's house on Tuesday and say, mama, do you have any more of that fried chicken? That, that fried chicken that you had on Sunday was awesome. I want some more of that. And she might tell him, yeah, there's a, there's a leg or there's a wing left. I, I'll put it in the microwave for you. And he, she would heat up that, my, or that chicken for his, her son in the microwave. And he, his taste buds would be all excited. But when he would eat the chicken on Tuesday, it never was as good as it was on Sunday. There, there's something about it being fresh. There's something about it when it first comes out of the grease that a microwave, as good as it is, it cannot duplicate the real thing. And he said on Tuesday, he could tell, tell his mama, Mama, there's something wrong with this chicken. And, and he likened it to the church. He said too many people are eating two-day-old fried chicken and thinking that the problem is with the recipe. And they're trying to find a new recipe. And they're trying to find new ingredients. 
sense. Uh, and they're trying to find new age philosophies and new way of thinking to, to produce the, the good fried chicken when all that they need uh, is a fresh batch of what's proven uh, and what's already worked. Uh, I'm not here to give you anything new. Uh, I'm not here to present to you new ingredients uh, or a new recipe. Uh, I'm looking straight in the Word of God uh, at that New Testament church. Uh, if we do what they did, uh, if we pay the price that they paid, uh, amen, if we get along with God the way they got along with God, uh, we can have the same move of God uh, and we can experience the same move uh, of the Holy Ghost in our generation uh, as they did. Uh, the same way that they turned their world upside down uh, by the power of the Spirit of God. Uh, we can turn our world uh, upside down for the cause uh, of Christ. Uh, I'm not looking for anything new tonight. Uh, I thank God for the proven recipe uh, that we have in the Word of God. Hallelujah. You may ask, how do I obtain this fire? You will get the same fire that they got when you do the same things that they did. You will receive the same fire and the same touch and the same spirit that they received when you do the same things that they did. A few things we're going to touch on tonight. You may ask, what did they do? First and foremost, they were obedient to the command of heaven to be filled with the Spirit. You know the verses very well in Acts chapter number 1 as Jesus is being ascended into uh, unto heaven. The Word of God says in verse number 4, And they being assembled together with them commanded them, that they should be uh, uh, gathered in Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost uh, not many days hence. Uh, in verse number 8, he said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And in Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Skipping down to verse number 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went into the upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Lodes, and Judas the brother, brother of James, and these, pay attention to this, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. In the first part of chapter number one, they received the promise of the Father. And they received the command to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And notice their response. They went to Jerusalem and they tarried in an upper room. They did not debate with Christ over the recipe. They did not debate with Christ and say there's got to be an easier way. They didn't try to talk him out of it and say, Lord, why don't you just lay hands on us here? You breathed on us before and said, receive you the Holy Holy Ghost, uh, why can't you breathe on us again? Uh, they didn't uh, uh, try to debate with him and try to get him to change uh, his mind. Uh, they received a promise. Uh, they received the instructions to go. Uh, and bless God, they went. Uh, and then they forgot uh, 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 forgot about things, forgot about the business, forgot uh, about family obligations. Uh, but they knew and they believed in their heart uh, that it was the express will of God uh, for them to receive the promise promise of the Holy Ghost. They knew, Brother Stephen, that it was God's will for them to be filled. So they did not debate. They obeyed every detail of the Word of God. He said, go to Jerusalem and they went. Listen, we have got to be obedient in the same manner, for the same way it was the will of God for that New Testament church to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. We have to believe within our heart. It is the same express will of God for every one of us young and old, male and female, white and colored no matter the pedigree it is God's will for us to be born again and then it is God's will for us to be full of this Holy Ghost, hallelujah the same way the command was there for that New Testament church to tarry until they were endued or clothed
clothed with power from on high, uh, how much more should we carry uh, in folly uh, until you and I are endued uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, and with power? Uh, if it was a promise then with no expiration date, uh, then that promise uh, was with you and I in mind. Uh, in the same way that they tarried until they were filled, uh, you and I uh, must carry uh, until the Holy Ghost is a reality uh, in our lives. What if that New Testament church was like many in Christendom today when they said, well, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. So that's good enough for me. If that was their philosophy, then they never would have survived the waves of persecution that they were destined for. They never would have had their soul filled with iron. In the same way Peter denied Christ by a fire on three different occasions and cussed and he swore with an oath and said that he did not even know the man. That was what he was destined to replicate and duplicate time after time after time again. Yes, they were saved. And yes, they were on their way to heaven. But they knew if they were going to be victorious in this life, they had to receive this promise that Jesus told them was theirs. They had to receive this blessing, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, and I'll say the same thing today. It's the blood plus nothing that qualifies you to heaven. It's not a baptism. It's not a tongue. It's not a sign or a miracle. It is the blood and the blood alone that qualifies you for heaven. And if any man preaches anything else, he's a curse preaching a false gospel. It is the blood and the blood alone that saves a man. Thank God for salvation that comes through the blood. Amen. But if you're not raptured one second after your born again experience, and if you plan to stay in this life and be victorious, then that's why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power. Not so you can get to heaven. The blood has already made you a candidate for that. Amen. But for you to be victorious in this life, it's going to take another power source. It's going to take something altogether different for you to be able to be victorious and stand through the trials and the tribulations in life. And that's why Christ on the cross of Calvary, He died and he gave up the ghost uh, so that you and I uh, could receive the ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost of heaven. Uh, and as he was victorious uh, and triumphed uh, over hell itself, uh, you and I can be victorious uh, in the same manner. Uh, not by our own works, uh, not by our own flesh, uh, but by the working uh, and the power uh, of the Holy Ghost in us. Uh, we must uh, be baptized uh, with the Holy Ghost and fire. You want to know why less than, I, I, I believe I read it right. Many years ago, I could be wrong of the number. But you want, I, I believe it's in the ballpark. Somewhere around the neighborhood of 18% in professing Pentecostal churches claim to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You want to know how we've arrived at that? We made the Holy Ghost optional. We made him optional. If you experience him and if you're filled with him, great. But if you're not and you never experienced this power, that's okay too. Listen, it was not optional for that New Testament church. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In Ephesians 5 and 18, we find a command to be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He didn't say you ought to be filled. He didn't say that you should be filled. He didn't say you could be filled. He didn't say you optionally could be filled. He said be filled with the Spirit. Imperatively be filled. The command, listen, the blueprint for a victorious church has not changed. It still takes the power of the Holy Ghost to be victorious in our 
our uh, in this hour uh, just as much as it did uh, in their hour. Uh, it's not optional, folks. Uh, and it's a slap in the face of God uh, if we make the Holy Ghost optional uh, in our churches. Uh, oh, I need uh, the Holy Ghost in my life. Uh, I've got to have uh, the Holy Ghost in my life uh, the same way you need uh, the Holy Ghost in your life. Uh, if you've not experienced uh, this power, uh, this same resurrection power uh, that raised Christ from the dead, uh, if it, uh, uh, amen, if He has never been a reality in your life, uh, amen, friend, uh, that's why you need Him. Uh, amen, that's why you need His power. Uh, amen, a different power source uh, that will enable you uh, to be victorious uh, in this present life. One thing you won't be able to leave here saying tonight is that Brother Corey thinks the Holy Ghost baptism is optional. He's not. It is imperative, Brother Meeks, that we be filled to receive this glorious Holy Ghost. We must believe that it is the expressed will of God for us just as much as it was the expressed will of God for them. I've got to hurry tonight. Verse number 14, how do I receive this gift? Well, the ingredients for us is the same as the ingredients for, for them. Number one, they were obedient to the command. The word of God says, told them to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. So you know what they did? They tarried in the city of Jerusalem. They didn't go to Capernaum. They didn't go to Antioch. They didn't go to Bethlehem. They didn't go to Galilee. They went to the right place. If you want to receive this power source in your life, it starts by going to the right place. Going to the source of the power. Listen, if, if I want to receive power to run a vacuum cleaner, I can try to hook up in a fire extinguisher all day long, but I'm not going to have any power. I, I can hook up uh, uh, to, to something else, to some other uh, energy source, uh, but I'm not going to have the power uh, that I need. Uh, if I want to receive power for my appliance, uh, then I've got to hook up uh, to the right power source. Uh, amen. It's the same way with the Holy Ghost of Heaven. Uh, if you want to receive this power, uh, you've got to go to the right source. Uh, you've got to go to the right place. Uh, he told them to go uh, to Jerusalem and Terry. Uh, go to your Jerusalem. Uh, go Go to the place, uh, amen, that you meet with God. Uh, go to the place uh, that you know the Holy Ghost will be there. Uh, go to the place uh, where you found Him in the past. Uh, go down to the altar uh, and begin to pray and seek His face. Uh, amen. It starts uh, by going uh, to the right place. Amen. Then not only did they go to the right place, but they did the right things. You may ask what they did. Number one, they were obedient. To every command of God. And it started with their obedience and unity. Verse number 14. And all continued with one accord in prayer and in supplication. Just a few weeks before. It was it James and John that was jockeying for position. Asking who could sit at the right hand of Christ. You see, they were worried about establishing an earthly kingdom and an earthly throne and having earthly power. But here, when Jesus gave them the command to go in the city of Jerusalem, they were united. There was no jockeying for position. There was no big eyes and no little U's. But they realized that the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. It didn't matter who was the best orator. 
It didn't matter who had the best education. The Bible says that they were all ignorant and unlearned men, uh, which means that they could not read or write. Uh, they had no formal education level. Uh, they weren't worried about who was smarter than the other. Uh, they knew uh, that they had received a promise from God uh, and they had to be united. Uh, they had to be yoked together uh, into the spirit uh, of unity. Uh, listen, if we want to have this fire in our church, uh, it must start, uh, amen, with unity, uh, being united together, uh, locked in step. Uh, one with another. It's not about who's bigger in Bible way assembly. It's not about who's bigger in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's about, amen, Him being bigger than all of us. If He be lifted up, He'll draw all men unto Himself. It's about magnifying and edifying Christ. Amen. I said it last week. It don't matter who preaches. It don't matter who sings. It don't matter who testifies. You've got some testimony services in the church church, thank God, not here. But if you don't call on them, bless God, they're going to blow up like a toad frog and you can forget about them getting in in that service because they didn't get to give that 30 second testimony. Listen, it's not about me getting to talk at all. It's not about you getting to talk at all. I just want to hear what he says. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to be in an atmosphere, amen, of unity that's conducive for the Holy Ghost to move. Amen. And when we are united we can see him move in power. The Holy Ghost would have never fallen on a divided church then, and he never will fall on a divided church now. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that again. Maybe I'll get a few more amens. He didn't fall on a divided church then. And he's not going to fall on a divided church now. Amen. But when, when we are united in one mind uh, and in one accord, uh, amen, we can see the power of God move. Uh, amen. Listen at Psalms 133. Behold uh, how good and pleasant it is uh, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh, it's like the precious ointment upon the beard uh, that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, uh, and went down from the skirts of his garments uh, as the dew of Hermon, uh, as the dew that descended upon the mounts of Zion. Uh, listen, for there the Lord commanded the blessing even life uh, forevermore uh, before the blessing could be commanded uh, the brethren had to be united it did not say that the blessings of God produced unity among the brethren it said that when the brethren was together in the spirit of unity then the Lord commanded the blessing Listen, when we all realize that we all have the same needs and that is for this Holy Ghost to be a reality. When we come down to this altar and pray, you may have different needs than I do. Sister Jennifer may be facing something altogether different than what I'm facing. Her needs could be on one end of the spectrum and mine could be totally on the opposite end of the spectrum. But when we come to this altar, we know that the answer and the remedy for both problems is the same. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is the answer. Amen. For me, the Spirit of God is the answer for you. And when we yoke together, amen, when me and Caleb and Brother Stephen, we yoke together, we may have total different problems, but when we realize that the answer is the same, amen, and we start moving in the same direction, and we stand united, amen, the atmosphere can begin changing. All things can begin happening because we all realize that while we have totally different problems. The answer for the problem is the same. Oh, hallelujah. That's why we must be united in prayer. Look at the Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It didn't say my Father. Notice that. This is not a singular prayer. But Jesus said, when you pray, this is the manner after which you ought to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us, not me, give us this day our daily bread. 
forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from, uh, from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, this is the manner that you ought to pray. Uh, and he led them on uh, a united prayer. Uh, when the body of Christ is praying the same thing, uh, seeking the same Savior, praying uh, in the same manner. Listen, that is the manner uh, in which we ought to pray. Uh, we may come to this altar and we may say different words uh, and we may say different syllables uh, because we have different needs, but we realize that we're all praying, amen, to our Father, and when we touch Him, oh, hallelujah, and the atmosphere begins to change, oh, it's then that we can press into His presence, His presence can press into us, and those needs begin to be met, and things begin to change, and that which is broken gets put back together, and that which is dead gets brought forth back to life. Listen, that is why we must be you Amen. They were not only obedient in unity, they were obedient in prayer. Listen, if there's anything that's a lost art and a lost science in the church today, it's the art of prayer. I got one come on. Let me back up and hit that thing in granny low. The greatest lost art in the church today is the art of prayer. Prayer. Prayer warriors are a dying breed. Men and women that's able to get a hold of God. Listen, if we need anything in this hour, it's not more entertainment better music, more choreography, or some educational church growth program. We need more men and women that can get a hold of God in prayer. That when they pray, God answers. God changes things. Listen, if a church is void of prayer, that church will be void of power. That's right. That's right. That church is void of prayer then that church will be void of power. Prayer shows our reliance on God. If we don't pray, Brother Meeks, then we're telling God we can do this on our own. If we don't pray and we don't get along with God in prayer and cry out to Him, then we're prideful in our arrogance of thinking that we can make it through this life without needing anything from him. Brother Steve, I need him. <laughs> I need him. I've got to have him. Amen. And when we get along with God in prayer, amen, we're crying out to him. Amen. That man that gets along with God in prayer is a man. Amen. That is serious. Amen. Show me a church that's getting people saved, delivered, set free, people healed, marriages being put back together in the spirit of God flowing in the service. And I will show you a church that prays. I told you last week about Pastor Morales in Cuba. Amen. Saint. Santiago de Cuba. Amen. It was, uh, it was a town. I, I wanted, to, wanted to call it Santo Domingo, but Santiago de Cuba, third largest city in Cuba. Amen. Right just a couple of blocks down from uh, Fidel Castro's mausoleum where um, uh, thousands upon thousands of people flock to. Uh, they have a changing of the guard there. Uh, just a couple of blocks down the road. Uh, amen. It's a church of God church that started out with seven people, uh, but they called uh, a 24 hour a day, seven day a week prayer meeting uh, that's been going on for somewhere around 20 years uh, without fail, uh, non-stop. Somebody has been in that church praying, uh, amen, 24 hours a day, uh, amen, for over 20 years, uh, and that church has grown from seven, uh, amen, to, to where it runs about 600 uh, every service, uh, and they have multiple services on Sunday morning, uh, amen, we preach that morning uh, uh, on the power of the Holy Ghost uh, in that service. 
And uh, it, it's happened to me just on a number of occasions. But as I, I began to pray, I felt the Holy Ghost so strong. I, I'd been sick with food poisoning the night before. I thought I was going to be buried beside Fidel in Cuba, sick uh, as a dog. Uh, but God told me in the middle of the night through my sickness, you're going to preach uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. I thought at one point in time somebody else was going to have to. But I knew when God spoke. Uh, amen. I knew we had a plan for that service. Very weak. Uh, the high it almost passed out multiple times uh, as I was preaching in that uh, that service. Uh, oh, but as we begin to preach, the Holy Ghost met us there. Uh, there was no way that people could come up to the altar. Uh, I mean, the, the, we, the way we have this altar, that was huge for them. Uh, you had about three feet from the platform uh, to their first pew uh, and had three bal or had two balconies uh, up uh, uh, up above the main floor, so they could fit everybody in. I, I preached. That morning on the Holy Ghost, I, I looked at Pastor Morales. I said, what do I do? I, I feel I need to pray for people, but we can't get into the altar. He said, you go to them. The Holy Ghost began talking to me. Go to this one and pray. And as soon as I would lay my hands on people that were going through to the baptism, of the Holy Ghost just like that. I, and then as soon as I would lay hands on them and go to the next one, I, they were falling down like cork wood. I, their language was changing from uh, from uh, uh, Spanish uh, into the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we had ourselves a time. Uh, he told me afterwards uh, that probably the greatest compliment I've ever received in, in ministry. Uh, he looked at me and he said, You, sir, uh, are a classical Pentecostal preacher. Uh, amen. I wore that thing like a badge of honor. Uh, I don't want to be new age. I don't want to be cool and hip. Amen. I don't want to be classical in the, uh, in the with the recipe of the Holy Ghost. That's the answer for Cuba. And that is the answer for us. Oh, but it would not have happened if that church had not been praying. Praying, seeking God. Prayer is the root of it all. I've got to hurry. All of these were in prayer. In one accord in prayer and supplication. <coughs> we cannot forget that last part. Supplication. If you were to look up that word in the Greek, it's the word diomai, which means to beg, oh, yeah. to beseech, oh, yeah. to earnestly pray, oh, yeah. to not just pray, yeah, right. but to earnestly pray. Amen. To beg, to ask, to desire, to long for. Yes, they had received the promise from Christ that the Holy Ghost was to be their a possession. But receiving the promise, Brother Meeks, was not good enough. Because they could have received the promise, but never prayed that thing through to, to fulfillment. And the Holy Ghost never would have been a power in their lives. Listen, I can tell you all day long, it is the will of God for this church to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And while that is 1,000% fact, and that is 1,000% proof, if we don't pray that thing through, amen, and we can say it now till Jesus comes and us not have that power. Listen, it's one thing to have a head knowledge to know uh, this is the will of God uh, but it's something else to become possessive uh, of that promise oh uh, and earnestly pray uh, and pray in supplication uh, and pray until you pray uh, listen uh, it's not just enough to pray uh, I heard the old timer say this and it didn't make much sense uh, but now I appreciate it all the more uh, when you pray uh, you've got to pray until you pray you've got to pray until you pray You've got to pray more uh, than until you touch heaven. Uh, but you've got to pray until heaven uh, touches you. Oh, I'm about to have me a spell right there. Uh, it's not just enough uh, to pray until you touch heaven. Uh, but stay there uh, in that floor uh, until heaven reaches down and touches you. Uh, that's when glory fills your soul. Uh, that's uh, when this Holy Ghost and fire uh, is a reality. Uh, well, that means I don't want to just pray uh, until I touch heaven. Uh, but I want to stay there. Uh, until I know heaven has come down and touched me. Yeah. That's what praying and supplication means. Listen, they yearn for this gift. They long for this gift. This wasn't just a 
10 minute prayer meeting. This was a 10 day prayer meeting. We live in a microwave society. Or if it takes more than three minutes, we don't want it. You won't ever have good chicken and dumplings in a three-minute microwave session. Mama's pound cake. It's as good as it can be. It don't come from a microwave in three minutes. Sometimes the best thing in life takes a little bit of time. Listen, there are times when we can get down to business with God, there's times where I pray 30, 45 seconds and I feel the Holy Ghost. Then there's other times where it's a sweet hour of prayer. But then there's other times when it's like the heavens are brass and it takes pounding day after day after day after day. Amen. Sometimes, amen, it's not just a, a quick fix or a little dab of do you. But sometimes it's prayer and supplication. It's yearning earnestly for a move of God. Listen, the word of God tells us in Isaiah 66 verse 8. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. That word to travail means to twist, to whirl, to dance, to writhe with pain, to fear, to tremble, to travail, to be in anguish, to be pained. But the word of God says as soon as she travailed, she brought forth her children. Oh, when the church gets hungry for this Holy Ghost and power uh, and we begin to travail uh, with God in prayer. Uh, amen. To where we, uh, amen, begin to not only travail, uh, but we begin to prevail in prayer. Uh, that's where the power is. Uh, that's where the power comes from. Uh, a lukewarm church uh, never has to worry about receiving this power. Uh, amen. A three minute prayer won't produce it. Uh, amen. But for the church is hungry. Uh, it don't matter if it takes three minutes, uh, three hours, uh, three days, uh, or three weeks, but they're going to pray until they pray. They're going to pray until they touch heaven, and heaven touches them. They're not worried about how long it takes. They're not worried about the cost that they have to pay. They just know that He promised the Holy Ghost, and they are going to pray and travail until they receive. Yeah. He shall receive this power. Listen, so it will be with us. We'll have to pray, amen, until we see revival. We may have to fast. We may have to work. We may have to writhe in prayer. Oh, but when we see it with our eyes and when we hold it with our hands, it's going to be worth every prayer meeting. Oh, yes. Thank it's going to be worth every tear. Thank you, it's going to be worth every drop of sweat. Amen. A year ago today, a Hudson was brought into this world. That was a very painful time for my wife that had to go through that process. Oh, but when we held that baby in our arms, she forgot about all the pain. She forgot about all the turmoil huh? because the joy, huh? oh, hallelujah, the joy huh? that she felt in her heart, huh? the joy that she was holding with her hands, huh? and yet it made all of the pain huh? worthwhile. Huh? I can tell you, folks, revival is the same exact way. Huh? When we see it, huh? when we hold it, huh? when we experience it, huh? it's going to be worth huh? every all-night prayer meeting. Huh? It's going to be worth huh? every time we push back the plate. Huh? It's going to be worth huh? every time we we spent with God in prayer. Hallelujah. It can be a reality for those that are united in unity, united in prayer, and united in supplication. Preach it on how to receive this fire. I've officially got through point one, and I'm done. There's no way. Amen. I'm going to try to get to that other point. So we'll finish it up later. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, we've tasted and we've seen that the Lord is good, but He desires more. I've tasted and I've seen that He's good, but I desire more. 
those that hunger and thirst shall be filled. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Those are definite phrases and definite words. Anything less than that, Brother Joey, we miss the mark. Not God. Fire. Amen. How to possess this fire. What, 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 what are you talking about fire? We preached the last three weeks on the characteristics. I'm closing with this. I, I believe it was Brother Harold Hanks told us in his own church, and I'm not for sure of the church where it was. And the name of the church is irrelevant. But they had been on an extended fast, praying and seeking God, praying for the Holy Ghost to come and to be a reality, their church and their community. And on a Sunday night, God was moving. God was blessing. All of a sudden, they noticed on the, the outside that fire trucks began to come into the parking lot. They noticed that people began to gather in the parking lot. So being concerned about what was going on, somebody walked outside and said, hey, what's going on? They said, there are reports that this church has caught on fire. And they walked outside and looked, and sure enough, fire was running down the, the, the main, the, where the church comes together. Fire was running down the apex of that church. But they sat there and they looked at it for about five minutes. They sent people up in the attic. The fire was not consuming. The fire was not burning. And the fire chief said, well, we can put water on this fire. But water won't even put this one out. <laughs> They got in their trucks and they left. Uh, amen. And that was a church that was known for years to come as the church on fire. Amen. The church on fire. Folks, that's what I want Bible Way Assembly of God to be. Uh, let it be known uh, throughout Foley. Let it be known throughout Baldwin County that we uh, are a church on fire. Uh, we're not a church uh, where you can find donuts and coffee. Uh, we're not a church where you can find uh, the latest self-help guru to where you can live uh, your best life. Now, oh, help me preach somebody. Uh, we're not here uh, preaching some fad uh, and some whim. Uh, but let us be known uh, that we are a church on fire. Uh, amen. And let the lost know, amen, that if they want to get right with God, amen, the church down the road is the place to go. Let it be known, amen, that if the drug addict wants to be delivered and sobered up, amen, that there's a church on fire, amen, a Bible way assembly, amen, where they can sober up and get delivered. Let it be that when the doctors are filled up and if there's more pandemic sweep in this land, that vaccines won't fix, that social distancing won't won't fix, uh, that mask won't fix, uh, and there's no help, uh, there's no remedy, uh, there's no medication. Uh, let this be a church uh, known uh, that there's men and women uh, full of faith uh, and the Holy Ghost uh, that will anoint you with oil, uh, pray the prayer of faith, uh, and your sick uh, will be healed. Uh, if we're known for anything, uh, let us be known uh, as a church uh, on fire. Stand with us all over the building. I was listening to a Baptist preacher preach this week. I love preaching to him. He's got more fire on him than any the 90% of Pentecostal preachers. But he said he got a call from the governor. He was the only church in Kingsport, Tennessee that didn't shut down. He said Baptist folks were talking about him. He said Assemblies of God folks were talking about him. He even got a call from the governor's office of Tennessee that said, brother, you're the only church not shut down. It looks bad on you and your congregation. I'm going to need you to shut down and obey the orders. you got to know the preacher. He picked up the phone and he said, you tell Bill Lee, the governor of Tennessee, if he thinks he's bad enough to come shut my church down, let him get in the car and come down to Kingsport, Tennessee and try. They said, sir, I'll deliver the message. He said three days later, the governor called him and said, sir, the only thing we can caution you is just be careful. <laughs> just be careful. Amen. Try to do distance the best as you can, but just keep doing what you're doing. 
And he said, all right. He said, I didn't think you were man enough to shut me down. But he said, what bothered me and what struck me the most, here's a man that don't claim to have the Holy Ghost as you and I have the Holy Ghost. Here's a man that don't claim to be full gospel as you and I are full gospel. But he said, the thing that bothered me the most is he said, the faith crowd that wants to dip hands well, with everybody and dip their fingers and all and pray for everybody, the assemblies of God, the church of God, he said they were the first ones to shut down. He said, I still can't figure out how you, how you claim to be people of faith when you're scared. Yeah. Amen. To anoint people and pray. Yeah, to right. pray the prayer of faith. Right. Listen, I, I'm not here right. bashing anybody. Man, but I have to believe that this Holy Ghost power that I have is greater than any man-made pandemic that we may face. Listen, I, I've had COVID. It was rough. And I may die of it down the road. But I will go to my grave believing that the Holy Ghost is greater. Oh, Shonda Amen. I'll go to my grave believing by faith that God is greater. Hallelujah. Than anything that we'll face in this life. Again, bashing nobody. Amen. But saying, let us be known that we're a church full of faith. Amen. That's greater than any sickness, than any fear, than any doubt, than any worry, uh, than any pestilence, uh, than any plague. Uh, our God uh, is greater. Let us be a church marked by this fire. I mean, how many of you will, will meet me in this, in this altar tonight? Lift your hands toward heaven. Amen. Cry out to God with me in prayer for, amen. I wish we'd pray for a while tonight. Amen. You may have to leave and go. Amen. I understand that. I know there's food and fellowship prepared for us in the back. But first, let's give the Holy Ghost due time. Let's give the Lord due time in this altar. Amen. Cry out together in unity, in one